So I'll go ahead and get started. First, uh, good morning to everyone who is on the call. We appreciate you taking your time to learn a little bit more about how uh, we can work with your business. Um, my name is uh, Dennis Roberts and I'm the Director of Programs and Property Management. I'm here with my colleague, Andrea Bruno. She's the Real Estate Officer for the Cuyahoga Land Bank. Um, in the way of background, I've been with the Land Bank since its inception back in 2009. I'm an attorney and I'm also a real estate agent. My colleague, Andrea Bruno, has been with the Land Bank over two years. She has a master's in urban planning and a master's in business administration. And she's also a real estate agent. Both of us work together with a number of builders in town, architects, engineers, surveyors, green raiders, and, and the like. Um, we're the people that are responsible for making sure that deals happen here at the Land Bank. So first, for those of you who may be less familiar with the Land Bank, the Land Bank is a quasi-governmental entity that was started back in 2009. It was started by a gentleman who at that point was the, uh, the treasurer, a gentleman by the name of Jim Bacacus, and also the current president of the Land Bank, a gentleman by the name of Gus Frangos, who's a renowned real estate attorney. Um, and he's the person who actually wrote the enabling legislation, what I'll, which I'll talk about momentarily. Um, but to, to make it very simple, the land bank is a quasi-government entity, which means it has characteristics of government and characteristics of a private business. What you see to your right is our mission statement. I won't read it to you, but in short, it basically means that we are charged with the responsibility of taking unproductive properties um, dilapidated properties, properties that are condemned, and either demolishing those properties or redeveloping those properties, basically taking properties that are non-productive and making them productive. In many respects, um, we have certain attributes of a government, good attributes. For example, we're subject to um, public records requests. Uh, we get audited by the state every year, and we have also have special powers. For example, we can hold, hold real estate tax exempt. We also are tied into the foreclosure process in a way that allows the land bank to acquire certain properties at no cost from the foreclosure process. So in that way, we're very much like government. But in other, other respects, we're like a business. Um, we're quite dynamic, uh, we're, we're not bureaucratic, we're able to make a decision, and we're able to uh, put deals together in a uh, transactional way. In other words, we can work with you. Simply put, um, and you'll hear a little bit about um, this going forward, um, the, the Land Bank has two different personalities, if you will. Um, on the left side is demolition. Uh, most people who are aware of the Land Bank are aware of our demolition activity. We have spent well over $100 million in the last 10 years just in demolition alone. So when you're driving by various communities, whether it's Maple Heights, Garfield, um, Cleveland, et cetera, and you see demolition taking place, uh, it's a high probability that it's a land bank paid for demolition. On the right hand side, you also see some of our other activity. We've been actively engaged in um, development for quite a few years as well. And as you will see shortly, uh, we're starting to get more and more in new construction, and that is what's brought us here to talk to you. And these are just some sample homes that we've either renovated or built over the last two years. As I mentioned earlier, back in 2009, um, Gus Frangos, Jim Rakakis uh, wrote the enabling legislation which did two things. One, it created a more accelerated foreclosure process in Cuyahoga County, uh, because that was one of the challenges that helped to cause some of the problems with regard to the real estate collapse in this community. And secondly, it created this entity called the Land Bank, this quasi-government entity that was designed and developed for the purposes of mitigating some of the negative consequences of the foreclosure crisis. In other words, they needed an entity to come and clean up some of the real estate mess. Between 2011, 2018, uh, we were largely engaged and involved in demolition, the demolition I just spoke of. We were also concurrently engaged in renovation, just not as robustly as we were in the demolition. Since 2018, however, we have uh, begun to scale up the renovation, renovation 
and the new construction. And that's why we're here today to talk to you. So what's the issue? The issue is because we have spent well over $100 million in demolition over the last nine or, nine or 10 years, uh, we have a lot of vacant lots and we're looking to do something productive with these vacant lots. We have a number of programs. However, we're gonna discuss four main programs that we think you might be interested in today. This is the uh, typical scenario, um, urban community where we have uh, scattered site vacant lots that we want to stimulate development in. So what does all this chit chat mean to you? That's the bottom line. It means that there's opportunity for your company to grow with the land bank if you have that interest. And if you're anything like me, when you get money, you wanna to head to the Bahamas, particularly in this uh, era of uh, global pandemic. So the bottom line is we believe there can be good synergy between your company and the land bank. Part of our discussion today is to solicit um, questions and ideas from you. We've designed four programs, which we're gonna discuss in some detail, but I wanna walk you through how we design those programs because I believe it might aid you in developing uh, responses to us that might be creative and allow us to continue to meet our mission obligations and also help your business grow. First and foremost, our programs are designed in a way to accommodate both the experienced builder and the less experienced builder. Secondly, we're trying our best to get the word out. This is our first step, um, you know, communicating with builders like yourselves. We also have information on our land bank website, which we will make available to you. Um, we have requests for applications um, that we will send out momentarily. And also we're doing email blasts and social media, um, have social media elements, excuse me. Um, thirdly, program design. We have purposely designed these programs in a way to minimize bureaucracy for you. Also, we want to create a sense of urgency. In other words, we want to get projects moving like ASAP. And we've done them in a way where we appreciate and understand the need for us to take reasonable uh, risk uh, for reasonable reward. And what we mean by that, the programs are designed in a way that um, we believe you can take advantage of them. And finally, uh, we have multiple options. We recognize not all builders slash developers are in the same position. So we designed the programs, excuse me, uh, we designed the programs in a way to, technology, you gotta love it. Um, we designed the programs in a way to accommodate various needs, there we go. So you're getting a summary version. So at a very high level, um, here are the four programs. First, and we'll get into a little bit more detail for each, but at a 10,000 foot level, we have something called the Gap Grant Program, which basically is what the name implies. We have about $1.2 million available. We're going to make about ten dollars to $30,000 of that one point two million available per house for a developer who has a project that's basically ready to go. You'll hear more details about that, but that program is for an experienced developer or builder, $10,000 to $30,000 10 per house. The second program we're gonna discuss is called Joint Venture. This is more of a case-by-case -case situation. Perhaps you've identified a parcel in one of our emerging areas that uh, where you're looking for a partner. Maybe it's a capital partner, maybe it's a pre-development partner. But again, it may be something that the land bank and your company can work together on. We'll talk about that in more detail. Andrea is gonna discuss something called the bid and build. This is a situation where we in effect allow you to bid a project and then we hire you as a general contractor to build a home. And then finally, the select build. Again, Andrea is gonna discuss this as well. And this is a situation wherein the land bank already owns the land, but you have identified the customer you have the capital and you're ready to go. You just are looking for a way to work with the land. As I mentioned, the GAP grant program. Again, this program is primarily for experienced builders. The way we are defining experience in this case is that the builder must have built the home, at least five homes in the last three years. As I mentioned before, in terms of money that's available, um, each home can receive a subsidy from the land bank anywhere from ten dollars to 
This program only applies to newly constructed homes, meaning it does not apply to rehabs or substantial renovation. Again, finally, and you'll see a map momentarily, it only, this program is only available in areas that we call emerging markets. Applications are on a competitive basis and they are due uh, by November 15th to the land bank. If you're interested in that program, certainly go to the website at the bottom. You'll see a two to three page detailed application. Um, suffice it to say, basically ask you for all the basic information that a uh, developer who's using due diligence would have to um, develop anyway. For example, a performer. As I mentioned earlier, the grant program is only appropriate for areas that are in red, hence the emerging market. Again, if you go to the website, we will provide you more information about what those markets are. But those of you who are familiar with Cuyahoga County, you can, pretty, you can get a pretty good feel. The strategy behind this program is to stimulate development in areas where development assistance is needed. The second program I wanna discuss is called the Joint Venture. Again, this is very much on a case by case. However, um, as an example, maybe two years ago, um, there was a property, well, it was a vacant lot in Ohio City, uh, but it wasn't the Ohio City that was exploding with, uh, with growth. It was a weaker part of the market. Uh, we engaged in a joint venture with a particular builder. The way that was done, the land bank set up a separate LLC that was partially owned by the builder, partially owned by the land bank. Uh, we both jointly paid for the property and we shared, paid for the expenses of the property and we also shared in the profit. Uh, but this can occur in a number of ways. The land bank can be pretty creative uh, when it comes to a deal. So what that means is if you identify a property in one of our emerging areas and you just need a partner to just get it over the hump, that is worth a call and discussion with the land bank. Um, the first thing we would ask you to do is to get pre-qualified. We have those documents on our website. Um, it basically gives us a little information about your company, demonstrates that you have the relevant experience, demonstrates that you have insurance, et cetera. Um, after that, we suggest that you give us a bid. We have prototype homes that we are looking to build. And uh, the first step in looking to find good uh, builders is to receive a bid. Once you receive a bid, we're then in position to put something together if it makes sense for both your company and ours. Next, you're going to hear from my colleague, Andrea Bruno. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, the next two programs that I'm going to talk about are Select Build and Bid Build. Um, but first, I'm going to start with Select Build. So um, I like to call this Builder Select. Uh, because essentially uh, the builder is identifying the lot as well as bringing the potential customer. So for example, say I'm a builder and I go to our website, kaihagolandbank.org, and I see a vacant lot there, 1234 Main Street. Um, I want more information about it because I have the perfect couple who is interested in this uh, neighborhood, and I know they want to build a house in this area. So the first step would be to contact myself. Um, you can contact me and I can check the availability of the lot. Um, if available, I will send you a new construction application. So that application, there's basically two tracks. Um, you can either do spectral or uh, have a construction loan. So um, spec build is essentially, you know, spec, spec build where the builder would spend their, their funding to uh, uh, build out the project. Um, with that, you would be securing all the design, going through the design process, the permitting process, um, zoning, making sure you're doing all your due diligence on that end. Um, and then at the time of permit being issued is when the land bank would actually release the land to you. With regards to the construction loan option, um, this would be where the buyer would bring their financing to the table. And so you would essentially use the construction loan to build out the project. And so um, dependent upon the lender uh, for the buyer, you would then release the, the land based on their, uh, their requirements. So uh, based on those two tracks, we would enter into an agreement accordingly and you guys could start to bid. Cool. 
the uh, next program is actually, or yeah, the next program is actually bid build. So this is the easiest and most straightforward program out of all four. Um, essentially, the land bank has various properties uh, that we've been developing uh, as part of our prototype, which I'll go through a little bit further uh, in a different slide. But um, essentially, we would send you construction drawings. Um, you would have all the information that you would need in order to uh, make a proper bid. And you would submit a bid or a spec to us as to uh, what you thought the, the price would be to build out that project. If we agreed upon it, then we would enter into the contract and we would essentially be hiring you as the builder for the project. So where do you guys go from here um, and what is the next step for you? So essentially the first step for any of these four options is to fill out a pre-qualification packet. So you can contact me. My contact information is going to be at the end of the uh, uh, program. Um, you can contact me. I'll make sure you have that pre-qualification packet. Uh, you send that in and then we'll have a meeting with you, uh, get to know you a little bit more and understand uh, your current capacity. Um, and then from there, you decide which programs that you're most interested in. Say you're interested in all of them or maybe just one of them fits for you. Um, so you, you can decide. Um, and then from there, you would sign a contract and you would get um, under agreement for you to perform. So these are just some examples of new construction that we've done uh, over the last past couple years. Um, we've built a few houses in Ohio City area over on West 29th and Hancock, uh, Bailey, West 57th. Uh, the house in the bottom right hand corner is actually a house that we finished up in Rocky River. Um, and then we have two new exciting projects that we're working on in South Euclid as well as Maple Heights. So we're really excited to be in both of those communities as well. So when I was talking about the bid build program, I mentioned the prototype design. And so this is um, the prototype, one of the prototypes that we're working on uh, at the land bank. It's a nod to modern classic architecture. Um, and we're gonna pull up a, a video um, and we will, um, get it going. Here we go. So essentially, as you can see, I think this house, you know, one of our reasons is we want to make sure that um, these homes are available throughout all of Cuyahoga County. So we wanted to uh, design a prototype that would um, fit within um, all of Cuyahoga County. Um, so, so we see this house nice, nicely fitting into all of those neighborhoods. So as we go through this, uh, this design, you can see the modern classic is a brand that we're trying to incorporate into not only new construction, but also rehab projects in, in, in the land bank. Um, and essentially, uh, you can see you know, the clean porch lines, uh, the clean roof lines. We have a grander porch on the front of the facade. Um, and as we get into the interior, you'll see it kind of the interior shows an open floor plan um, and you'll see a vaulted ceiling as well. So again, a, a nod to classic architecture, but um, with a unique uh, look for, for our projects. And this is a home that we have not built yet, but we have our construction drawn. Sorry that the video is jumping a little bit, but we want to kind of give you a feel of the types of product products that the land bank is in the process of creating. This is some basic information about the home. Right, right. And two, uh, we should mention that this is just one of the prototypes that we're looking at. Um, we're also in the design phase of a potential ranch uh, prototype uh, with Modern Classic. So um, we're really excited to see how um, these homes can be integrated in throughout Cuyahoga County. Um, yeah, we're really excited about this uh, branding. So lastly, I want to just kind of recap a summary overview of all four projects uh, or all four programs. So first we have the GAP grant, um, which again, the highlight of this is a, um, it really only applies to emerging markets only. And I will say that there is a due date on that one as of November 15th. So if you are interested in that program, please make sure that you go to the website and get 
further information because that one does come with a, uh, a timeline. Um, the joint venture program, again, that's more case-by-case -case situation um, for those creative deals that don't necessarily fit within uh, the rest of the three buckets, but something that we would be willing to explore. Um, bid build is, again, the prototype design that we just went through. Um, we would send you construction drawings for that. You would send in a bid, and um, if we agreed upon the price, then we would enter into a contract to hire you as the builder. And then lastly, we have the select build, where um, the builder then identifies the lot as well as brings the customer to the table. Um, and then you can either use the spec build option or the uh, construction financing option for the end buyer. So that's a good overview. Um, I know that was a quick presentation, but I think it gave you a great overview of what we have to offer here at the Land Bank. And I'm hopeful that um, if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and here is our contact information for more info. And I think we're available for questions now. Yeah, absolutely, we have time. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, uh, Tony Cusia, Cleveland Custom Builders. Um, I've been wondering about this for years, and I, this is great. Um, it's very organized, so thank you. Um, is there a limit to the amount of properties in certain demographic areas as far as, um, you know, working together? I, I'm only saying that because sometimes, you know, your, your, your moving of um, equipment um, and your setup costs, what have you, if you've got a bulk of, of lots in one certain area, you can help bring down those, I would say, fixed costs uh, within your agreement. Just, just wondering, and, and maybe this is probably a question that's too far in advance, but just more so, you know, is there a limited amount of, of lots one builder or one entity can obtain? The short answer is no. Uh, we actually like scale. We appreciate your question because the more scale, the, the more you're able to reduce the uh, impact of the fixed costs. But scale is better. Um, you know, obviously, you know, uh, you know, it's not going to be something that's ridiculous. It's not going to be a million parcels uh, in, in, you know, to one builder. But to the extent a builder is prepared and ready to do something at scale that makes financial sense for the builder and for the land bank, we're absolutely interested. Thank you. You're welcome. I have another question. Sorry. Um, how about the marketing and, and selling? So let's just say we do a spec build. Are, are, you, are you guys tied to the decision on... Um, the person selling the property, can we utilize our own resources um, with that? Is there a set fee, a real estate fee tied to the deal? Um, you know, as they put the performer together on each individual project, um, I just want to understand some of that. And maybe some of this stuff is already in the documentation and I haven't seen it yet, but. Well, it depends on which program you're talking about. If you are uh, talking about the GAP grant program, for example, where we're um, agreeing to put in ten to $30,000 per house, um, there is a reasonableness in terms of the developer fee. In other words, when you turn in your pro forma, if you have a development fee for a house that, let's say, sells at uh, 280 and you have a development fee um, in there at uh, $120,000, right? You know, that's not something we're going to fund. But, you know, we're, we're very aware what industry standard is. Uh, for developer fees, and uh, if it's within the realm of reasonableness, we'll certainly um, take a serious look at funding it. Okay, great. That's those are the only two questions I wrote down for now. Feel free to ask. I mean, we're here for you, and we hope that uh, people have some additional questions as well. Is there a ceiling on the price of the house? 
The, uh, for the GAP grant program, there's a ceiling of $400,000. For the other programs, there is not. In other words, if we joint venture on a program and a home sells for a half a million dollars, that's no issue. With regard to the GAP grant program, because of the requirements of the funding, there is a for sale ceiling of $400,000. Is there a ceiling on the income of the buyer? No. Thank you. You're welcome. So and again, we designed these programs, uh, we attempted to design these programs in a way to make them builder and developer friendly. But at the same time, uh, working in a way that's responsible to the community. So this is uh, Mike Schramm. I'm the director of IT and research at the Cuyahoga Land Bank. And I just want to point out that there's a lot of information on the GAP, GAP, GAP grant program uh, on our website and uh, we showed the the map of where uh, the gap grant program is eligible in this presentation you can find an interactive version of that map in the uh, attachment that's called the rfa um, so um, if you just visit that website you'll learn a lot more about this gap grant uh, process and program Thank you. Are there any additional questions? And I think we're going to make this uh, uh, video available afterwards, um, not only through HCA, but also potentially through the land bank. So um, if you have other uh, developers or builders that want more information about us, feel free to uh, send this link over to them as well.